is Mike from MPC Stuff, and now we're going to show you how to install the red thick pads onto the MPC Touch. Um, one thing you'll note is the Touch did come with a little thicker pads than the original MPCs. However, uh, the MPC Stuff ones are still thicker, and we have them in different colors. We have them clear, we have them in red, uh, white, black, um, blue. So I'm going to show you here. It's pretty simple on the MPC Touch. It's not too bad to, uh, to put them in. Uh, first things first, we've already done some of the steps just to make it a little bit easier um, for us to show. First things first on the back, you're going to see there's some plastic nuts that go around these inputs right here. Uh, let's see if I can find them. And these are going to screw off. There's going to be one, two, three, four. You can do it with your hand. They might be a little bit tight, so you might have to just go like that and pull them off. Then you're going to want to take the knob off here and the knob here. These knobs just pull directly off. Same goes for the power one. The power one's a little hard to get at, so you might want to actually use um, some sort of uh, pliers or something like that to get it off. Then you're going to turn your MPC out upside down. You might want to put it on a soft surface or something like that just so you don't damage the pots or anything of that nature. Um, and then you're going to see the screws on the bottom. There's, I'm going to point them out here. You're just going to take those out. Once those are out, you're ready to pull the bottom cover off. What you're going to do is going to push forward a little bit here to make sure that you clear. Sorry, I'm going to get past there. Make sure you push off. That way, these holes in the top can get by the power buttons and these. So that's why you're going to not going to pull straight up because then you'll hit these here. You're going to push out. That way, they don't damage it. Uh, now we're looking here, and we're going to work in this section right here because the pads are on this end. So I'm going to go ahead now and show you what we need to do over here. Okay, now we're going to show you here how um, we're going to take this little pad section out here. Uh, first things first, just to get this ribbon cable out of the way, we're going to push up here, and there's a connector here. This connector, there's two black pieces. You're going to push those forward, forward like that. I'm not sure if you can see here. Uh, but those, this connector pushes forward. That'll release this here so I can get this out. Just be careful not to push on this too hard. Um, this little black piece that pushes that way or can break. So now we have that release so we can access this one screw here. Um, so now we're gonna remove all the screws. Alright, so now we have all these screws out here, and we'll be able to lift up the black piece. I like to keep the screws in there just so I don't lose them, so I'll let them sit in there. And just be careful when you put it down that you don't lose any. So now we have access to the board that is basically the sensor board. What you're going to notice here about the sensor board is we're going to have to take this PCB off, or at least move it so we can move it up a little bit, so we can get this one out so we can get to the pads. So now I'm gonna show you that next. This ribbon doesn't really have to come off, but if you want to, you can pull it off. Um, you'll see all the screws around here. There's one that's kind of underneath this here. So we'll need to pull that one out. Make sure you put your screws aside. we have our screws out of here this will allow access to pull this up and out of the way you'll see this little area right here just be careful it's a lot easier just to kind of move it out of the way the way these are set up down here um, so once we get that moved out of the way we can access this if you're changing this board out if you broke something say on the top of this then that's how you change out that board right there all right so now we're gonna show you how to pull off the pad PCB right here so we can get to the pads so now that we have that removed we're gonna go ahead here and remove the ones for the pad PCB. These ones are a little smaller, so if you have a screwdriver with a really thick top, you might wanna change over to something a little bit smaller. I'd also suggest putting these aside just because they are a little smaller. And also remember that these are smaller screws that are going into here. Now that we have it out, we'll be able to lift up here. 
be careful with these. I tend to just pull that that way. That way we don't have to release any of these and take a chance. This is our pad sensor, so if we need to replace the pad sensors on these, if they go bad over time, they might. Um, and that's how it's gonna come out. What I tend to do is just go like this and put them to this side. That way when you're changing everything, it's uniform. So now we'll look at our sensors that we're putting on and we're gonna exchange them for the ones that are here. So you're gonna notice there is a little bit of notch right there on these, so that is the difference that you're gonna see when you're putting these in, because they're slightly different. Uh, these ones were made originally for the studio, which used the same exact system, uh, but for the touch, they have these little notches cut out. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it in, and you'll say even without the notches, they still go in just fine. They have the things over here on this side here, and it's just thinner on these inside edges. So you just gotta make sure to get that in there and put in like that. So now that we have them down, we're gonna put this back just as we had it before. You're gonna notice the non-glossy side is gonna go towards this. And then we're gonna bring these back down here. You're gonna lift up a little bit here when you're putting it in and make sure all your pads are set and settled in here before you start screwing in. Make sure that you have it lifted up when you're putting the screws in here, because if you don't, and that's leaning against something on the bottom, it's gonna push the pad PCB board up. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, we're just gonna put these screws back in, the small ones, in the screw holes. You'll see where the screw holes are. Don't put it where there's no screw hole, here, where it has a little screw thing. Otherwise, you're gonna notice that that's different when it's gonna go back on. Okay. Now I have them all in here. You'll see that's one here, 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 there, there, there. I'm just gonna make sure they're all tight. All right, so now we have our pad PCB in there. Uh, all the little screws are in there. So our next step is gonna go ahead and put this PCB back in. Remember when we pulled out right here, this area, just make sure that gets up underneath here. Sometimes it can be a little bit weird getting it in there. You see this little area right here, that has to go through there. So you might have to move it around a little bit. Yourself situated the right way. There we go. Took me a little longer than normal, but now we have it in and it'll kind of click itself in. So those are still there. Make sure that everything's still connected. These are going to come over here. Just as we did when we started, these are going to be the screws here. So right now, we're gonna put this PCB back on. Okay, so now we have them all in here. Uh, there's the one here, here, there, 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 there. So all those screws in, those are the medium silver size screws, not the ones that were from the patent tray. Uh, so now we got all those in, and this is gonna come like this, but remember, we gotta do this first and put these the pad tray back. So this is here, now we're gonna go next to put our pad tray back in. We just set our pad tray back on and we haven't put the screws in, but if you have it in right, it should just sit right in there. So you'll see this one goes right here and you'll see where the screws, the screw holes are underneath. So once you have it all lined up, then you can go ahead and put your screws back in. Uh, the screws, remember the first one, just do the one under there. I usually go this route, one here, 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 and then do the rest of the others as you go around. And then don't forget the little center one. Um, so we're gonna do that now and put those back in. That way we can put this back and get our unit back in, in place. All right, so we have all those in now, all the ones around and the center one. So we're gonna put our ribbon cable back in. This can be kind of tricky sometimes just because the way, the angle that you're getting with it. Um, make sure this is pushed forward. That's ready to push in. And it goes kind of underneath that clip. Once you have it settled in there, then you just push each side of the clip back. So once those are pushed back, it'll seal that in there so it can't come back out. So now we have that all done. All we have to do now is turn it around and put our back plate back on. All right, so now we're gonna just put our back plate back on. 
Um, this is the kind of the simpler part. Just like we did before, you're gonna angle it down. That way it can get over these things in the back, the inputs. This can kind of be a pain sometimes. See, now we got it over the inputs in the back and it's coming down here. You'll see, you might need to shake it a little bit to finally get it into the right area to get your screws to show. So once you get your screw areas to show, we're gonna put all these screws back into the bottom just like we took out from the beginning. One thing to take note of, I notice, there is a ground right here. So make sure that's going over this hole right here. So when this comes down, sorry, it snapped in this area. You might need to move this back over a little bit just so you can see the hole like I have here. That way that ground stays into place right there. So now we're gonna make sure we put all of them back in. All right, now we have all our screws back in the bottom. This is one thing at the beginning we didn't explain super well, but it was kind of self-explanatory the way these things go on. They just screw back on. Uh, the same way they came off, they go back on. Um, we didn't show them come off last time, but it was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these are pretty easy too. We'll have our power button. The power button just goes on, just find the right way. And then just press it like you were turning it on. These, also self-explanatory. Oh, just need to put them on the right way. Those just go into the back. Get them on properly. Finish these two here. Great. That's the only thing you might notice about these. Since they're plastic, sometimes they won't seem to want to go on straight. So, that's our last one. So now we have everything back in, and you notice we have our thick fat pads in red, all ready to go on our MPC Touch. If you have any questions or you need to buy any parts, uh, you can go to mpcstuff.com or email us at sales at mpcstuff.com. Thank you.